Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing Icarus, the open world survival crafting game with a strong focus on dealing with the environment rather than fighting other players. The first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Icarus is currently in full release and available on PC for $30. So what exactly is Icarus? Well, Icarus is a survival game that shares many similarities with its predecessors. You have a bit of just about every survival game mixed into it in one way or another. It also takes from other games such as Skyrim with its unique stealth style mechanic that grants you more damage. Icarus's core gameplay is focused around the idea that you are landing on a planet where you will start with essentially nothing other than your character's levels. After that, you will have to complete some sort of mission within the prospect that you've just landed on. These can be things such as go scan these things over here, fight a boss, or discover a new area. Once you've completed said mission, you will then return to your drop pod and shoot back up into space to collect your reward and exotic material. These rewards come in the form of two currencies, the first being a form of money and the second being a special currency which is primarily gained through extracting with a special resource known as exotics. These currencies can then be spent in the game's workshop to buy items that you will be able to take repeatedly into each and every mission with you. For an example, you could start the next mission with a water canteen, an oxygen tank, and maybe some tools to save you some time when starting the next mission. This is essentially the game's main progression mechanic aside from character levels. Leveling up your character will unlock new blueprints as well as talent points for your character. These talent points can be things like increased move speed, increased crafting speeds, more damage, and even special things like the ability to instantly mine an entire node. The blueprints are also very important as these act as your crafting recipes. In order to craft, say, an iron pickaxe, you are going to have to first learn the blueprint in order to make it. These come in a progressive tree which will expand into new tiers of technology as you level up. At this point in time, you can get every single recipe should you level all the way up to max, however that is going to take you quite a long time. Icarus also has a few different biomes. You will start in the forest, but as you progress you will soon discover a desert and a snow biome which will force you to change the way that you're playing. Each of these biomes have their own creatures and hazards for you to overcome. Since there is zero PvP in this game, unless of course you just want to fight with your buddies, there's not really a lot of things for you to deal with, excluding the environment and the creatures that inhabit it. Let's just say it can be both hard and easy to survive in Icarus. What you might think to be a small storm passing by could quickly turn into a lightning storm that burns down your house, or what would be a snowstorm could turn into a blizzard quickly and then start to freeze you to death. So now let's jump over to the pros and cons section for the video. First up for the pros is that Icarus brings a great co-op experience to the survival genre. Being able to work with your friends to build shelters, overcome the environment, and complete missions was always fun and presented a fair amount of challenge for two to three players. Next up is the fact that this game has what seems to be extremely active devs. Since day one, there has been a patch almost every day to help fix some of the game's jankiness or bugs, which is rare to see in this day and age. And lastly for the pros is that Icarus has some amazing amazing graphics, however it's going to require you to have a pretty powerful computer if you want to run them on Ultra. To give you some perspective, we were able to get about 50 to 60 frames per second on Ultra using a 2070 graphics card, however our friend was only able to get about 45 to 55 frames per second with the GTX 1650 Super. Now for the cons. First up is that Icarus feels rather clunky, buggy, and honestly unfinished. Now, the clunkiness comes in when you're playing the game and mechanics really just don't feel great. The movement seems a little weird. If you watch your buddy move, they actually kind of waddle in a direction, which is just kind of a strange action to have happen. There's also a lot of bugs in Icarus, and if you don't believe me, just watch this quick clip. Then finally, Icarus is just very unfinished. I mean, I hate to say it, they claim the game is in full release, but I'm sorry, this is definitely an early access title as far as I'm concerned. There is no way you can call your game full release when it has so many bugs, it has so many mechanic issues, it has so many balance issues, and many other things to go along with that. Second on the list is that Solo is rather rough. 
If I'm being completely honest here, I've seen a lot of complaints about how the solo play is very difficult. Yes, they do give you a talent tree that you can go into to try to help deal with this, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to grind a lot of levels just to get the recipes you need that you could have had by just having a few friends with you. Just to give you a great example of this, if say you're trying to fight a polar bear and you're by yourself, even with a gun, you may not make it out alive. But if you have a buddy and you have three bows, it seems to be significantly easier and increases your odds dramatically. I wish they would add some scaling to the game to make the mobs more difficult based on the number of players in your game. Now our last con is probably one of the biggest ones, and that's the fact that you're going to have to run extremely long distances in order to get to objectives sometimes. In the beginning of the game, they're really not too bad, but as you progress and do things like the waterfall mission, you're going to start to encounter missions that take you sometimes two to three in-game days to get to your destination. Yes, I'm sure there are people out there who love to speedrun these, but for the majority of players, it takes a lot of time to do all that traveling, and if you don't have talent points into movement speed, it's going to be an absolute pain. So now it's time for the rating for the game, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that we spend on the game. So for this game in particular, in Icarus, we would want to get roughly 30 hours of enjoyment out of the $30 that we spent. And after putting over 24 played hours into this game, we give it 6 out of 10 potatoes. Icarus was a super fun experience. We loved dealing with the weather mechanics as well as the drop in and drop out gameplay where you don't have to be afraid that some player is going to come and raid your base. The roguelike progression elements are super interesting and bring some much needed life to the survival genre. Icarus however still is plagued with quite a few bugs, glitches, balance issues, and just overall kind of jankiness. Luckily though, this game seems to have a great foundation for its gameplay as well as active devs who who are listening to their community. With all that being said though, we feel it is safe to say that Icarus in its current state is probably worth the cost. Before you guys go, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe as we put out multiple new videos every single week and your support is what makes this all possible. If you would like to support us even further and get some cool benefits, check out our membership program which can be found in the join button below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.